So um, the factors for success in elbow arthroscopy are similar for uh, any type of surgery we perform. So you have to take into consideration the patient, what kind of patient you are bringing into the operating room. The second factor is the surgeon, uh, what kind of experience the surgeon has in elbow arthroscopy. The third one is the problem, what kind of problem you are trying to treat. And then the last one is the technique. Um, in terms of patient selection, it's key to uh, start your elbow arthroscopy with mild arthritis, <coughs> removal of loose bodies. Post-traumatic arthritis can be challenging because there are previous um, incisions that can be, uh, you can have hardware that is present. And as I said before, you have to avoid cases with uh, minimal joint space. If there is a prior surgery to the elbow, look at the incisions. Um, it's good to request the operative report to see exactly uh, what kind of surgery was performed, uh, whether there was a prior ulnar nerve uh, surgery, and uh, if there's hardware, whether this, the hardware will pose any uh, difficulty in placing uh, the, your, uh, your portals. Subluxating ulnar nerve is not very common, but it can happen, uh, especially in the adolescents. Uh, you have to examine them in clinic and document it for medical legal reasons. High BMI is challenging. Uh, in the area uh, Dr. Tui and I will practice, we have patients with, uh, with uh, have, uh, obesity issues. Uh, the, um, the high obesity, we did recently a study, about 250 cases of elbow arthroscopy was the only factor associated with high risk of paresthesias after surgery. Um, and um, in terms of the surgeon, if you have experience with arthroscopy in other joints, it helps. Um, there's studies about the learner, learning curve. Uh, one study out of Europe has shown, actually not, I think from Korea, uh, they have shown that you need at least 15 cases before you will notice a significant increase in the, uh, decrease, excuse me, in the OR time. Um, our data is a little bit different. What we found is that um, you'd need at least 10 years of experience to have about 50% reduction in the operative time. Um, prior experience in elbow arthroscopy is a must. If you haven't done arthroscopy in other joints and starts with the elbow, is a bad idea. Um, that's patients you can select and start doing these procedures is probably removal of loose body or tennis elbow um, where you have intact joint and you have um, in full range of motion and uh, enough space to work. In terms of the problem, uh, elbow stiffness, usually more than 50% or loss of range of motion. You might experience problems establishing um, a portal that you um, be successful, uh, successfully uh, introduced in the joint. Um, bone of bone arthritis, of course, is contraindication. Rheumatoid arthritis, we don't see it so much nowadays because of patients are being treated effectively with uh, new drugs. But uh, when we used to do it, and when I was a resident, uh, there was poor visualization in the cases of severe rheumatoid arthritis because of the synovitis of the elbow. So this is another case uh, that uh, was referred to me. He's uh, 14. Uh, he, he had a previous uh, supraconular humerus fracture that was treated in Africa. And I didn't have an operative report. I didn't know what they, would have, they have done. There was a long posterior incision. And as you can see here, the joint space uh, looks uh, OK to perform elbow arthroscopy. And this is a CT scan. It demonstrates the deformity. So the plan was to do osteoplasty with the possibility of proceeding with uh, an open uh, procedure and removing an um, anterior capsule if needed. If you notice as his range of motion before surgery, he has significant st stiffness in the affected side. And uh, that's alarming that you may have issues introducing into the joint. So to cut a long story short, we started with uh, elbow arthroscopy. We spent about 30 minutes trying to get into the joint. We were unsuccessful. Uh, when we did the open approach and we completed the procedure through the posterior uh, prior incision, we found that there was essentially no joint space. Um, now, moving forward about the problems is that the tennis elbow um, is, is something that is a matter of debate. Some uh, elbow arthroscopists will not perform uh, an arthroscopic uh, tennis elbow because it takes longer, it's more expensive. 
There's randomized uh, trials. I was involved in one of them when I was working with Dr. Roosh at Duke University, and there was uh, no benefit of one procedure over the other. So the mini open approach works as well as the arthroscopic approach in treating the problem. It's less expensive and you have equal results. But I have to say that if you suspect that there's a, a intraarticular pathology, if you do an open approach, you won't find um, what's going on in the joint. So you've been in situations where you scope an elbow to do a tennis elbow release and you f might find an inflamed <coughs> plica that may be causing the problem. Pediatric contract lesions are a good indication to do the uh, procedure in the early phases of your learning curve. I mentioned bef before about the ulnar nerve neur neuritis and you have to examine the patients before you're taking them to the operating room. That's a must for every problem. And less than 90 degrees of elbow flexion before surgery is an indication to do, go ahead and do an insider decompression or an open ulnar nerve transposition to avoid postoperative uh, ulnar nerve problems. So uh, this is the case I showed you before, which uh, improved the range of motion significantly, despite the x-ray that was mislead misleading in terms of the joint space. And when we talk about complications, uh, when Dave Roosh did this uh, survey of the, American, uh, of the members of the American Society of the Surgery of the Hand, um, he found a significant number of nerve injuries. Most of them were associated with debridement for osteoarthritis. And my suspicion is that uh, this were done during um, resection of the uh, capsule anteriorly where the nerve is, lives very close, the radial nerve. Positioning uh, lateral versus prone is also a matter of debate and is surgeon's preference. You must be able to move the elbow during surgery, so make sure nothing is blocking your range of motion. Keep your arm holder away from the antecubital uh, fossa, excuse me, and place it close to the axilla. And then by speaking, uh, a, a personal communication I had with Dr. Lu from Shanghai, who is probably one of the busiest elbow arthroscopists over there. They have a huge number of elbow uh, surgeries in his institution. He does more than 400, 400 arthroscopies per year. He was using routinely um, electrocautery to do the anterior cap uh, capsular releases, and he noticed a very high percentage of uh, HO formation. So that's something to keep in mind. Uh, you can use uh, retractors, free retractors, and uh, establish accessory portals for visualization. Um, in our hospital, if you tell, say to the anesthesiologist, I'm going to do this elbow arthroscopy in the prone position, probably they're not going to like you very much uh, because it's a lot of trouble for them. So the lateral position is more popular, I think. Um, so uh, to summarize about the technique, portal location is highly important, especially when you have uh, Patients with low BMI, you can palpate structures and uh, establish your portal successfully. Starting uh, ulnary versus radial is actually surgeon's preference. Uh, using hand osteotomes for osteophyte removal is better than using a spinning burr because uh, spinning burr can also traumatize tissues. Uh, and the, for the posterior compartment, if you have a problem uh, getting in there because of uh, in, um, fluid extravasation or the elbow is significantly swollen is not a sign of weakness to make a small incision and finish your procedure with a minimally open approach in the posterior compartment. The nerve injuries can be lacerations from portal placement. These are not very bad injuries. Of course, it's something that you have to avoid. The worst injuries are the ones from shaving, especially in the anterior compartment. Those have a wide zone of injury. and. Uh, uh, are the result of poor visualization and limited uh, range of motion before surgery. Thank you very much.